This is Fountain Pendulum. The subject before us today is the cautionary tale of a dud. Unfortunately, in this case, it is this Visconti Homo sapiens. Let's talk about the flaws and failures of this particular pen and the things to keep an eye out for whether you're buying a Visconti new, but especially if you're buying used, which I did. Now, it's always a good thing to begin with the positive. So I'll begin with what called me to purchase this pen and also the first place of its positive attributes. So let's take a look at this. First of all, I think this is a very attractive pen. I think the material is especially what drew me to it. So the sizing is, let me show you side by side. This is a Pilot Custom 823, and this is a Leonardo Memento Zero. So you can see its sizing and girth is, girth is above both of them, except maybe uh, on the center bands here on the Leonardo. And um, if this was fully closed, which right now it's not, it's open, I guess I could close that. Slightly longer, but close. So that's just an idea of the sizing. I do find it extremely comfortable in the hand and I like the weight to it. Most of the weight, a lot of the weight is in the cap. So once you actually, if you don't post, it's actually very comfortable to hold and to write with in my opinion. So starting at the top here, we have this Visconti finial. It looks like there's some chipping here on the V and it's possible that can be from where it's possible that a previous individual tried to pick this. Uh, these are interchangeable. So it's possible the person was trying to pick it off and chipped. So either way, um, maybe not the greatest of the quality. Um, then we come down to this Visconti bridge clip. Very nice, very hefty. I believe it's spring loaded. And right here, it feels like stone, like there's some grit and texture across it. Double bands feel very nice. Center band also very nice that says and reads Homo sapiens. And then a small ur band through the back where the filling mechanism is. So this is the Visconti Homo sapiens in the lava color offerings. And this particular one is the ash white. They have other color offerings as well. Magnetic cap. So securely um, clasped to the body of the pen. The magnet feels strong. It would not fall off with a lot of effort. So you kind of have to use a little effort to take it off, which I think is a good thing. Inside it does look like it has the kind of plastic rubber sealing uh, casing inside. I don't know if this is going to show, but I'm going to say right off the bat that this cap is wonky. There's some extra rivets or cutting on the inside of this. And when, now I've actually handled a brand new one of these before, twice. So I have a feel, a good feeling of what it's supposed to feel like. And when this particular pen caps magnetically, it just kind of, again, it's secure, but it doesn't clasp the way that a Bren or any of them should. The ones that are brand new that function properly that I have handled, it attracts and it makes kind of a clicking noise. This one, it like there you put it close and it does hold but it doesn't fully attach really until you press and then it 
softly clicks into place. So I think that's, let me know for those of you, maybe this is a, a earlier, older model. I'm not sure what year this was made, but I think that's a defect. The reason I think that is when I look around the band, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell this, but the gap right here, just watch the band in the cap. It's not even. It's crooked and it's wonky. And I think that's why it doesn't cap properly. Furthermore, again, I don't know if you can see, but see that line that goes across here? It ceases to exist on this side. So I think there's some defect for certain on this on this capping mechanism. You can see this, again, this is before it's clicked. See how the width varies? So I think that's very poor manufacturing and quality control. And that's unfortunate for a pen of this caliber cost and what's supposed to be quality. So that's, uh, that's a big issue for me right off the bat. Um, now I'm not going to operate this right now. I will later the vac piston, but the threads on this are very smooth. Very, very, very smooth. I believe it's, I'm going to take a look when I open it, but I believe it's metal on metal, but that feels glassy smooth and very excellent. Um, the material feels really nice too. It's maybe not as textured as the other lava pens that aren't part of the color collection, but the texture is definitely what attracts me to this pen as well as its design, but the material of that volcanic um, rock infused into this along with resin. So it is a mix of resin and the volcanic stone. And um, Visconti doesn't share what proportion that is or what ratio, what percentage, but some people have suggested maybe 50-50. So that seems to have held up really nice. I think it's a very resilient material. Now we come to um, the grip section. And here's, here's the thing with the grip section on on probably all of these pens, but especially on these. I think it takes a bold person to be willing to take Visconti at their word, saying that this is a stain resistant, they do say resistant, not proof, by the way, material, and by white for a pen that you'll be inking up and dipping. I think if you're gonna get a Visconti in general, you should consider very seriously getting the inkwell to go with it, to fill it, so that you just avoid that whole situation of getting ink all over your pen. Any pen, but especially these because they're particularly porous because of the material of the volcanic stone. But you'll see here, again, stain resistant, but even with diligent cleaning, can you see, in contrast to here, the blue hue from previous use and ownership and there's like a black band around the bottom of the grip right here other models i haven't seen seen that i don't think it's ink staining i think that was the design but again maybe this is an older model plastic feed a disappointment for a pen in this price range i am of the opinion that ebonite is always better and preferable in my opinion again and i think when you're paying this degree of money and even pens substantially lower in the hundreds range ebonite should be used period 14 karat gold nib beautiful design really like that nib uh, i think Bicolors are striking, uh, which Visconti does offer in their other nibs, but still, very nice design. It's not at all plain. Uh, breather hole is arched, and I think that's very nice. And again, just the general design of the pen. I like the design of the longer tines as well, compared to some of the other um, manufactured pens. In-house nib, so one of the, the newest uh, version. My understanding is the nibs do thread out 
and you can interchange and replace them. So that's pretty cool. Um, so these are kind of the reasons that I was drawn to this pen and this specific model being the um, Homo sapiens lava color. There is only one other, um, I like the, I like the red one, the, the kind of mustardy colored one is nice too, but other than the Visconti Homo sapiens lava color, there's only one other Visconti, um, that would seriously tempt me for purchase. So, um, Anyway, we're not talking about that today. So yeah, that's an overlook. So let's put this to the paper. Now, as we get deeper and deeper into this video, we will get deeper and dip deeper into the issues of this particular pen. But these, again, these are things to be looking out for, whether you're buying brand new or used, you want to give these pens a thorough look through the quality control and manufacturing unfortunately for Visconti in general though my understanding it has improved over the years is uh, unfortunately rather poor and unreliable so it's it's just it is what it is and if you are interested enough in one of these pens to purchase them Visconti in general again these are things that I think you should be looking out for if you buy it used be on it um, and do the best you can to inquire about these things or look at the pictures or both. Um, but if you are buying new, you have a little bit more coverage because, you know, you can work with the manufacturer and get it fixed or replaced um, or the retailer as well. So here we go. For those of you who are interested, I always get inquiries. Um, today I've got my first wheel press carriage. And then this uh, ink that we're going to be using today is the Candy Marsala. This is an extra fine nib. Does it look like it? Not to me. This is, to me, entering broad category. Maybe a very wet medium. And this is an extra fine nib. Hmm. Uh, very smooth. I will, I will give it that. It is a very smooth writer. But Visconti nibs are rather infamous for baby's bottom. So let's examine the situation. Of course, I already know what the result is, but I wanted to share it with you. First of all, these tines are shamefully misaligned. I don't know if it came like that, like new, or if that is the result of poor usage. There we go. Not only are they misaligned, but it looks like they kind of are, um, one of the times is kind of, uh, what would you say, like torqued sideways a little bit. So that's not good. Nothing a Nibmeister couldn't fix, I imagine. And looking very closely, it does look like it has some baby's bottom to my eye. I'm not a Nibmeister, but that's what I would call it for. Here's a closer look at the nib itself. Let me focus this better. Um, the nib is bouncy little bit soft. That does not mean flexible. 
just I'm just saying it's a soft nib. I'm not experiencing any skipping, surprisingly, even though the nib is very misaligned and uh, potentially has some baby bottom. I think it helps that it's so wet. So it just kind of glides. And I think if this pen was emptied, maybe it would be a different story. So I'll just write this out again, just for the sake of Okay, so I'm gonna, the, the nib is a big problem. Again, nothing a nib meister probably can't fix, but I, <laughs> you know, it's just already a headache. Okay, now my biggest beef with this, and again, I don't know if it came like this new or if it was a result of use. We're gonna expel the ink, watch this. And I gave it a full fill nothing. I was writing with this pen and it wrote dry, like from wet to dry. And that concerned me. I, here's a test for the VAC system, which by the way, is not working. And the incapacity of this VAC system is 1.5 milliliters. Okay. Now, seldom do you get a full fill on a VAC system, period, let alone this particular Visconti Homo sapiens. So I'm not necessarily expecting a 1.5 fill, but I'm expecting something reasonable. And the fact that I inked this pen up entirely and then there's no ink to drip out is obviously a problem. So I have already done this test, but I'm gonna do it with you. So we're gonna check this out. First of all, um, let me put this down for a second. So I have this um, eyedropper. It's glass, rubber cap, got it at um, the pharmacy. And I'm gonna use it because it's the most exact uh, tool I have to measure capacity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a little bit of tape. And I'm just gonna tape the bottom so that when I check the ink capacity, it will hold. This water will be coming out red, so it'll be really easy to see what the situation is. Okay, so first of all, in we go. And again, this had Candy Marsala in it, so the water is going to be red. So let me back up a little bit here. Okay, I've got the piston all the way out. I've got the water completely submerged into the grip section. So we're going to go down. I'm not feeling much pressure. I do see bubbles coming out. That's a good sign. No click. So in VAC systems and uh, including this Visconti Homo sapiens, you should feel the chamber pressurizing. You should hear a click when you get about here, and then water should be drawn up into your reservoir chamber. So that's not happening. I'm gonna try it faster. I've already done this, obviously. No change. And when I do it really fast, all you're gonna hear is this clicking against that. It's not actually like the VAC system. I actually heard a puff. Can you guys hear that? I don't know. But it's like a pfft. so that's not good either so again i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna check the incapacity i did that really quick what you're hearing is this clicking against the other metal piece but just in case that was the vac system let's just check the incapacity okay so again i have this taped off so i'm going to draw this back up 
and just slowly and carefully put this on. Okay, I heard a pfft. So we got between 0.5 and 0.75. So somewhere around six, maybe 0.6 of one milliliter on a, you know, 1.5 full capacity pen. Mm, it's highly suspicious, I think. So just to show you what is a closer performance of what this should look like, I have my Pilot 823 which is a VAC system that works. So I had this inked up with the same um, ink color and I'm gonna operate this. I'll submerge the nib in. I can feel immense pressure building. It's an effort to push. click and you can see it's filled up to there now there's a method to get a full fill on this but we'll cover that on a different video because that's not what we're talking about today I'm going to do it again but faster but again let's watch how much ink gets expelled it you know it's like it's a lot look at this and when I did it on the Visconti before, it's just a couple of drops, really. And I understand that the ink capacity on this particular pen versus the Visconti are totally different. That's not what's that question. It's just the proper function of the back system and the telltale signs that there is indeed a problem. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to do it as reasonably fast as I can now. So definite, definite click happening. Even if you do it empty, so look. It's gonna spritz all over the place. <clears throat> so, those, those are the concerns of this particular dud of a homo sapiens. And it's really unfortunate because I, again, really liked just nothing. So yeah, it's, um, it's unfortunate, but You know, you, you uh, take the chance, I guess, when you're dealing with a brand like this. So that's just a, that's something you just have to keep in mind. Um, now, if you get it new or used and it's working well, these mechanisms, that's wonderful. Maintain them. Um, and if you're not using an inkwell, which again, I think you should, then I think as long as you ink it up and you, you know, wet down the area that got inked and dry it, I don't think you're going to have a staining issue. I think the staining issue comes from uh, poor care, uh, dipping it, not taking it, care of it right away and so on, but uh, I don't know because I haven't owned this pen long enough to know. So yeah, comfort is going back to the, just some good things. The comfort is there. This is not sharp, but it is a step. So that's, that's literally the only thing that may not be the optimal comfort in general, but in general, it's a very comfortable pen. And I think most of the weight is in this cap. So once you, um, 
uncap it and you don't post it, very lovely to write with. Now, me personally, after this um, unfortunate experience and just firsthand seeing some of the quality control issues, like especially the cap, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> I think it's you know and that's the nib maybe the previous owner ruined the vac system maybe broke down over time perhaps but all in all this this color series has not been out very long long enough to see this pen deteriorate especially when there's like vintage pens uh, used on the market that have held up better and they offer a two-year warranty so I don't know if this pen is two years old. It could be older, for sure. Um, but, oh yeah, I was gonna say this. Yes, it is metal on metal. So the operating of this is very smooth and the threads are very, very, very smooth. Something that the A23 could have improved on because they did uh, did they do metal to... I won't get distracted. I think it's it might be metal to, to resin. So anyway, um, just because of the experience with this pen, I'm, I'm crossing it off my list. Um, I've always liked this pen. I've looked forward to owning one. I will not be planning on keeping this. I uh, plan to, uh, you know, reach out to the to the seller and sort out the, the differences with the issues because this was um, not sold under these contingencies. It was supposed to be a, a B pen, good condition, everything functional, and it's not. So anyway, I'll make a different video about buying and selling used and new also. But for me, I'm just, I'm just kind of crossing this off my list and going, you know, that was an interesting experience. <laughs> it would have been different buying it new, it would have been different buying it used and just having a better quality pen, but um, it is what it is. It's an example of what's out there and what to be having keen eyes for when you're buying in the market, new or used. And again, um, the nib and the vac system may have been failure from use or failure over time. I'm not sure because I don't know how long uh, ago this was purchased from the original buyer. But definitely the way that the cap functions is manufacturing and quality control. It's just, trust me, um, from the new ones that function properly that I've handled at the store, this has a very satisfying magnetic attachment and kind of clasp and I don't they're not supposed to click certainly I don't think unless again this is an older model and even beside that it's crooked like no matter how you slice this if you magnetically attach it and there's a little bit of a gap between the white and the finial there it's crooked and if you click it in further it's still crooked so and and then again the those lines inside the cap that begin and then cease it's, it's just all very strange and questionable so but yeah it is a shame i really wish visconti would kind of pull it together because with quality control the artistic design and uniqueness of material on these pens is phenomenal so it's unfortunate it's not the complete package and also I would say for a price, uh, for a pen in this price point, again, no ebonite feed, and also a two year warranty for a pen approaching a thousand dollars. Hmm. That doesn't really shout confidence to me. I mean, two year warranty is not bad, but yeah. So yeah, let, let me know what you guys have experienced with your Visconti's in general. I know I've definitely heard of people that have had them uh, with no issue, no nib issues, no quality issues. So uh, good ones are out there, but this is definitely a dud. And um, yeah, share with us in the comments below what your experience has been. If you've had one and had no issue and loved it, or if you've gotten one and just had headaches with it, uh, this is definitely a tale of woe of this particular one, not a win. And also, I would say if you're buying new, buy it from someone or uh, from a retailer that offers tuning included uh, with their in-house Nibmeister, like nibs.com, 
and other other uh, retailers also that include tuning because I think that's just going to spare you from the beginning. Whatever nib size you decide to get, get it tuned right away but since it has such a reputation for having that issue so that, you know, you're just sparing yourself. <laughs> so, because um, if you can get a pen that's in, let's say the quality control is there for the actual machining and manufacturing and then uh, the nib just gets tuned right away in a way to not only so that it's straight <laughs> but that it's tuned to your specifications in the sense of um, how wet you like your nib to be I think you're already on the road to enjoying what can be a terrific pen versus having a headache to begin with so um, and then you know from there if their extra fines just tend to be I think they do tend to be kind of broad uh, I like more of a Japanese extra fine myself so um, I would I always like to start with the company's offering especially if it's in-house made nib and then get it you know refined because maybe I'll really like it by the way then the the grind on this is very cool and very interesting yeah. and to my knowledge this is the original grind if if yours is not like this and this was a custom grind let me know in the comments but it's almost like a little architecty, not as severe obviously but see how the let me zoom in a little bit more there we go see how the nib kind of it's not as bulbous as some and it and it goes from uh it has a slant upwards i think that's very unique and i think that's very cool and by the way this would serve very nicely to a reverse uh grind if you wanted i would have done like a extra fine uh japanese and then like a extra extra fine on the reverse i think that this is actually a pen that probably one of the more superior for reverse in the sense of um the wetness was fair in the flow but also uh, I forgot to show that so sorry about that but also it's comfortable upside down like no issue so that is the overlook for this pen um, I would have to be tempted with an exceptional deal to ever consider getting one of these uh, particular um, Visconti Visconti homo sapiens again um, I just the experience just kind of less left a uh, a bitter taste for me and I'm just kind of like frustrated with it emotionally right now so so that's that and um, look forward to hearing about all of your experiences with these homo sapiens um, whether you've had fortunate success with them or if they have been problematic so share with us your story in the comments below and thank you for watching. It's all up to you now. <laughs>